Hey, my name is James Dickerson and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now in this video, I'm gonna tell you why I'm not a landlord and what actually that means. What do I do instead of being a landlord? Well, that's got your intrigue up, I'm sure. While you're here, make sure before you dive into the content that you smash the like button. That really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. So please do me a favor there and smash subscribe and hit the bell notification if you didn't already. We're on a journey to 5,000 subscribers we're nearly there. We might hit that in April if all things go well. So do subscribe and hit the bell notification. Well, as a property investor, sometimes you might get described as a landlord. So my definition of a landlord is somebody that owns a rental property, a buy-to-let property, and when an issue comes up, they deal with that. So they will be the one that organises the plumber, the builder, if there's some sort of issue, maybe even they go round themselves. Uh, maybe they're a handyman and they go round and fix a jammed lock or maybe they get a window sorted. I don't know. There's all sorts of different things that you might do as a landlord. So a landlord is someone that's very hands on. And while that is great because it saves you some money because you're not paying estate agent fees, what it does mean is if you're on holiday, you're the one that gets the calls. If the boiler breaks at two in the morning, you're the one that gets those calls. And that isn't really something that I want. I don't wanna be on call 24 seven for my tenants. So what do I do differently? Well, I actually use property management companies, agents, letting agents. And the reason I do that is because I really want to have that hands off experience. Let's give you some examples of things that have gone wrong in my property portfolio in the last few months. So one of them, let's start with the worst one first. This was pretty bad. Uh, one of them has a large flat roof. In, flat, in fact, most of the property is under a flat roof. It's an extension, uh, a flat that's been basically built into an extension on a property with nothing above it. Now, what happened was that roof had a major leak. Uh, it has a felt roof and it had a major leak. Now, fortunately, the management company of the block had to deal with that because they are in charge of the roofs and all the exterior walls. That's part of the leasehold agreement that we hold with them. So they had to get somebody out. They had the insurance. So I don't even have to have insurance in this instance. And what had happened was, as that project went on, the builder found some rotten wood and all of it caved in on the tenant's bedroom, which was an absolute nightmare. And so that then put a wall between me and the tenant and the management company were the ones that were dealing with that on my behalf. Obviously, I made sure my tenant was all right. Obviously, I wanted to make sure that this got dealt with as quickly as possible. But the good things were, they were the ones that had to deal with this on my behalf. They were the ones that had to get the insurance company in, the multiple quotes, get the builders in, and get all of this done. I was just aware of what was going on. We did make a courtesy call. We didn't need to do that, but we would like to make sure that our tenants are okay. So that's one thing that happened there. Now, there are other little things that happen. In Hastings, for example, we had a leak uh, in a wall. There was a crack in a wall that came through. And the estate agent down there called me up, just let me know what was going on. They get the builder in, they got multiple quotes, they pick someone from that, and they got that crack sorted in a matter of days. So these things can get resolved way quicker. The thing is, if you're a landlord, maybe you've got some skills, maybe you're some sort of tradesperson. If you do the work on your property, then you're not out earning yourself. So that's an important consideration here. The main thing is, though, that you're on call 24-7. That's what I don't like. Now, the agents, they have access to multiple tradespeople. So they know the best plumbers in town. They know the best builders in town. They've already got those key relationships. And because maybe they get quite a bit of work off that plumber, that, the, sorry, the plumber gets quite a lot of work off the agent, they're more likely to make it a priority job for them, which is something if you just have a one-off job, you're just not able to do. Now, obviously there's a cost, different management costs vary in different areas. Sometimes up north it's a little bit more. Uh, we found because the rents are lower, 
They need to make something, right? So if you said to a northern management company, charge me 5%, but they're only collecting 500 quid rent, they're not going to be able to give you a very good service for that. So we found that we pay around 10 to 12% up north. We also would pay around 8 to 10% in the south. Uh, and, and I've seen rates in London as low as 5%. And for that peace of mind, for the speed of getting it done, for also getting it all logged, because what's also important when you do maintenance, you need to have it all logged in a proper system. You've got to request access in the right way. All of these things the agent will do for you so you're not liable for anything. And that's the key Thing here. So as a property investor, my advice to you, or if you're thinking about getting into property, is don't cut corners trying to save some costs here and there. Use an estate agent. They know what they're doing. They've got the skills. They've got the power team that you don't have already. And that will really make a difference to your property investing journey. So look, things go wrong. I've had tons of things that have gone wrong with my properties this year. None of them have been a big deal. All of them have got dealt with straight away, and that's the difference here. So that's why I'm not a landlord. I'm a property investor that uses property management teams. What do you think? Do you agree with this? Do you want to be more hands-on to save money? Comment below and let me know. Do like this video and subscribe to the channel and check out all the other content on my channel, including this video right here. Bye for now.